So it says we are live. So welcome everyone to another Talk and Tie event. Uh, tonight I've got Tim Flagler with me, but um, it's good to uh, have everybody join us. We are live on both my Phil Rowley Fly Fishing page and my YouTube channel. And if you're a member of my Stillwater Academy group, private group page, you're live there as well. I guess now for many of many of us, tying season is underway. I know where I am in uh, Alberta, we are in the throes of winter. I think we're down to minus 45 centigrade tonight, which is cold. We are busting cold records all over the place, all over Western Canada and probably down into the United States a little bit. So what better time than tying flies? And tonight we're going to talk about deer hair um, and other types of hair, but specifically deer hair. Um, I've got uh, Tim here. He's going to be demonstrating with his great camera work, uh, different techniques and uh, showing you some different materials and things like that. And doing the demonstrations is where we can. Um, where you want, just pop a question into the comment section of either your Facebook page where you're watching or YouTube. And we'll do our best to get them all answered as much as we can. Some of you provided questions prior to, and that's greatly appreciated. And uh, if we can't answer them, we'll do our best to uh, chime in on the comments after the broadcast has uh, uh, concluded. Um, so again, I'm very excited to have Tim back with me. Uh, it was about a year or so ago that we had a general fly tying Q&A and that proved very successful. Um, Tim and I love to talk about fly tying, so we'll be here for at least an hour. Um, for those of you who don't know Tim, um, I'd be surprised, but uh, he's a host of one of the most active YouTube channels out there. Um, he's a videographer by profession, so his videos are first class, multiple camera angles, great close-ups, just great detail, uh, showing all the tips. His channel's currently got over 106,000 subscribers and over 33 million views to his credit. Um, so if you aren't aware of Tim already, please go over, visit his channel, give him a subscribe. You won't regret it. Um, Tim recently um, was proud to hear that he was the recipient of Fly Tire Magazine's Fly Tire of the Year Award. So that's quite an accomplishment. So kudos to Tim for that. And of course, he also provides other tips as well for Fly Tire Magazine and the Orvis um, tying tips as well he does. So you want to pick those up as well. They're short, concise tips, but they're great. So, uh, and of course, you'll see Tim at a variety of shows across North America. Tim and I meet all the time at the fly fishing shows. He's a, um, a presenter at all the shows, fly tying and, and uh, pre presentations like that. So it's once again an honor to have Tim join me. So I'll bring him in. And uh, how you doing, Tim? Hey, Tim. Uh, pretty good, Phil. You? Good. good. You, cold, you, can you, hear me, <laughs> you can hear me okay? We're, we're doing well? We're doing Audio well. video wise? I think so. I think so. Um, Super. Everybody, everybody can see that. I see we've got a lot of uh, people. we got... Uh, Philip from uh, Arkansas. We got Gerald, a friend of mine. He's from California. Uh, Brent Dawson. Wow, I know Brent. Uh, yeah, lots of guys coming in. So that's great to uh, great to uh, have them here and joining us. So, uh, so Tim, dear hair, yes sir, good stuff, isn't it? Or hair in general. Um, so we're yeah. going to talk. What do we want to talk about tonight? Oh, let's talk about deer hair. Um, okay. And, and there's a lot to talk about, Phil. I mean, yep. it, it's, and uh, if I get going <laughs> too much, just cut me off because yep. um, there's, there's so much and there's so much confusion about it too, mm -hmm. uh, about, uh, and, and it, rightly so they're, they're it, it's not just this simple thing that they're, you know, that they're bucktail and that there's just one kind of deer hair yep. uh, that, that works for everything. And there, there's so many variables involved in it. Well, there's uh, different species of deer hair too, right? We've got coastal deer, mule deer, white tail. Um, you've got deer from Europe, follow, follow deer, right? I believe that's a European yep. deer. Lots of different. So they've all got different properties, different colorations. Uh, and they, they have, you know, a wide range of uses common to all. And some are very much specific to one particular style of fly. Um, as well. So a really versatile material that everybody should be comfortable with. I think a lot of people get scared, you know, have have bad experience with it. You know, I, I always look at deer hair as a bit like, a, a, you know, a, a young puppy. You got to constantly keep it on a tight leash or it's 
it's all <laughs> doing its own thing and not behaving and your flies don't look like you want them to. Yep. You know, there's times when you want to hold it's a bit like Kenny Rogers, right? There's times when you need to hold it and times when you need to <laughs> just spin it, maybe not fold it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why don't we go through some of those, um, some of your experiences with the different types of deer hair and uh, um, what your thoughts are on it. Okay. Should we start at the back end of the deer? How about that? <laughs> sure. Let's talk a little. I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> let me, uh, let me, I, mean, I guess in a could, bad place within five minutes. It's good. <laughs> I guess we could start at the front, but there's yeah. not much there at the front. Uh, let me just make sure my cameras are up and running here. Uh, do a little zoom in. There's where we'll be doing some tying and then oh there we go All right, so well. the 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 back end of the deer <laughs> the tail yeah. uh is is probably the i guess the most rudimentary tying material that sort of the easiest to understand of all all the the deer hair that's available and this is this is a wonderful specimen this is a, a north american white tail very very long um uh hair down here uh, almost seven inches long. Just just a brief little bit of anatomy of the tail. Up by the tip of the tail, the, the hair is shorter. It's less hollow. It doesn't flare as much. And as you come down, you get a little bit longer. And you can probably tell where I've taken the prime spot of this tail out already. It's very thin. Uh, these are the, the, the hairs. They're, they're nice and long. They don't flare a whole lot. Real great for wing and tail material. Think uh, lefties, deceivers, and and clouser minnows. You get down a little bit further, and nice long hair. The what happens though is down at the base of the hair, it gets a little more hollow, and so when you tie it in, it tends to flare. And that's you know sometimes good, sometimes bad. There are ways to control that. And you get down here, and nice, beautiful long hair, but. Uh, very hollow at the base, and so you, you need to take care when you're tying in so it doesn't flare too much. The other thing that a lot of people don't use on their bucktail is this stuff from the back, okay? These are real long, they, but they're, they're hollow at the same time, not too hollow, and real nice for muddlers. And oh, wow. it, yeah, it's, you got beautiful colored tips on there and uh, get it get it stacked up and you can trim it out and it, it flares just about the right amount for muddlers. And when yeah, you I have, don't think too many tires know about that at all. Yeah, and when, when, when you have dyed bucktail like this, you can see just the beautiful coloration that you get. And a lot, a lot of times you're, you're not getting that in, in the muddler hair that, that we're using. So no. uh, just, just something to keep in mind, I, I'm sure you guys that have been tying for a while have just got a ton of bucktails that, that look like they're moth eaten, you know, because all this stuff is taken off. But I pretty much guarantee you they haven't touched this. No, that's a great tip, Tim. That's yep, a great tip. Yep. So that's, um, that's cool. So working down, where are we going next? Um, where are we going next? Yeah. Um, on the deer. Yeah. Well, and, and this this part is important, Phil, that, that and I, I think a lot of people really don't don't pay attention to this part. It, it, it's where on the deer the hair comes from, and mm -hmm. it, it makes a huge difference. But along with that, it also makes it, first of all, species of deer makes a big difference. Um, where the deer comes from, um, whether it's a, a very northern deer or more of a southern deer, some people, I, I've never really gotten the full understanding of what a coastal deer is. Um, I've heard people say that it's actually a black-tailed deer from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, I believe that's where that's where that's where I'm used to, you know, being from that, there. There are coastal yep. deer were from there because their hair is adapted to living in that damp climate. Yeah, right? and so, I've um, I've also heard though that they that it's um, some people have said that it's from like the Gulf Coast of the United States, Mississippi, Alabama, yeah. where where the deer are just generally smaller. Uh, by the coast and then i've also heard that it's it's pretty much coastal anywhere because yeah. the deer are traditionally smaller so anyway just smaller smaller um shorter hair on there but the other thing so so it, it depends on where the deer's from it mm -hmm. depends on how old the deer is depends somewhat whether it's male female 
it also and it's huge i and i didn't understand this until a couple of years ago it's what time of the year the deer is harvested makes yeah. a huge huge difference and i i kind of got into that a lot with comparadon hair um because that that's where the hair really has to be just about perfect and and uh, I'll, I'll show you in just a, a minute sure. what what i mean by that and uh, because it's you, you know a small wing, and so that hair has to flare, but it can't have wrong tips on it. It's just it can't be too brittle. It's got to be Everything. clean eat as well, right? Not a lot of yeah. under fur in there because you could exactly. you get a nice clump, and by the time you prepare it, you've got nothing. There's nothing left. left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just um, let me. Um, I will talk about the body hair later. Let's get sure. right into that because I, I I really think that this is what what people have have the the most difficult time understanding and a, a lot of it comes down to elk hair wings or uh comparadons and yeah. you can buy material that's listed as comparadon hair but you can see the difference in the length of the hair between this comparadon hair and this comparadon hair mm -hmm. and so you cover a whole range to me um uh, delaware river club this is al Cowsey's. Uh, yeah. club and i mean it's kind of where the comparadon came from I, and um i talked got to speak with a woman who used to select the deer hair for them and she gave me the whole rundown and this is this is their their premium stuff they're they're dark and just about the right length a little over an inch in length is kind of what you want so something like this as well very nice specimen flares just the right amount um the other one to look for, and I'll tell you an example in a minute here, but yeah, this and is. You also want, you're looking for the rel, nice, like the one in your right hand, they're very even tips. Yeah. Right? It almost and, doesn't need stacking if you grab it right. But there, this is where you really have to start to look hard. Let me grab out a couple samples here. <clears throat> I, I hope you guys are going to be able to see this on camera. If you take deer hair and go like this, and and flip it like this so you can see the tips these are all very very even which is really really nice i am going to zoom in a little bit here if i can yeah that looks good oh well done yeah that looks great okay yeah and what you're what you're seeing here is not a lot of dark tips on them you can see some longer dark tips there but i'm going to pick up this piece i believe this one has the longer see those longer dark tips yeah Okay, if you use this for a comparadon, your your wing is you know a size sixteen comparadon. It's going to be all these fine dark tips, and that's about it. So what you want is hair that doesn't have those fine dark tips on it. And what I was led to believe is those fine dark tips are from more a, of a winter harvested deer, which makes sense. They're trying to absorb more solar radiation. Yep. And so they, their fur darkens, particularly it grows out at the tips and it gets dark. Whereas this, this deer would be more of an early season harvest deer where they haven't grown that out. They're actually yep. trying to shed heat. So lighter tips. Yep. And, that and makes I, sense. I, yeah. And yep. again, this was, this is about halfway in between some long, dark tips, but not too bad very even tips. And so when I'm when I'm looking at deer hair and selecting deer hair, that's what I'm doing. I'm just pulling down and and checking to make sure that those the tips are relatively aligned and aren't um, aren't too black. And it can be dyed. Um, yep. This is a real nice specimen. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and a li little bit longer. Um, one of the things that you can do, this really isn't for for compared on wings or anything, um, longer, longer stuff. This is called a Primo strip works yep. real well. You can kind of spin it works, works nicely for muddlers, but I'm going to, you can probably see it right there. Long, long, dark tips on there. So not, yep. not really appropriate for muddlers. Yep. Um, anyway, um, the, the one that I've gotten just, I don't want to go too brand specific here, but the one I've been having the best luck with, it's not even labeled as compared on hair. It's from Wapsie, and they 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 list it as short, fine hair. 
And <clears throat> not all of it is just, you know, is, is perfect, perfect, but I'll show you this one. This one's been dyed a uh, done. And, and you you can probably tell how little is left. Um, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and up in here, it's just got these just beautiful little tips on it. And for like for for blueing olive comparadons. <laughs> uh, and I, I can't I haven't been able to get any more of this stuff in that color, so that, that we're we're saving that one. But <laughs> <laughs> so that As will not be. There's no chance of that. You mailing me that, huh? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely none. Um, no. But even within this, and, and again, you guys, you, you gotta you gotta really look. This sample, I've used it a lot. I use it more for actually for elk hair caddis, and mm -hmm. but the the tips are a little uneven. And a lot, I'm going to have to zoom in again, a lot of, um, no, but a lot of those skinny, um, since it's bleached, you can't really, they're not black anymore, but yeah. those skinny, skinny tips on them, which I don't, don't really like. I like that, you know, I want the tips to be down there, not this fluffy stuff up here. Um, so you, as you can probably tell, and, and this is about a 10th of my, collection of specifically uh hair for doing elk hair caddis as well as um comparadons and you, you just you i, I hate to say it, you just got to keep on buying until you you find <laughs> what, what's working that's a terrible thing to do but um and this co coastal Coastal looks very similar. I, I you, yeah. you just I'm not sure you really know if it was, you know, wasn't in the bag and labeled. Uh, uh, very, very fine. Flares a little bit. Um, behaves correctly. Uh, so you're like, for, I guess for for comparadons, we want that, you know, nice even tips, short fiber because it's a small fly, right? So uh, yeah, and yeah. and hair hair that's about an inch in length. I think that's yeah. a a real good way to just ballpark it initially is go, go mm -hmm. hair that's an inch long. And yeah. Cause not every supply, they might, like you said, it's short, fine by one uh, distributor manufacturer. The next one they have specific, this is comparadon hair. Yeah. Right. And, I, and, and from what I've seen out West, cause it's a popular pattern as well is when people find it, it's like finding a good Cree, everybody buys it. And it's oh cool. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you're in an area where, you know, if your local shop where there are a lot of people in the know, it's yeah. a, it's always a competition when that, that order's coming from Hairline or Wops or whatever yeah. it is. Well, I, I recently saw a post from Kelly Gallup who runs Slide In in uh, Montana right on the banks of the Madison, and he was saying he got, I want to say, at least 200 packages of Comparadon here, and, and I bet really? you it's gone. I bet you it's gone already yeah. or close to it, right? So. Well, we, and we'll we'll get to that when we get to the L care. Um, yeah. uh, the the other one for for me for L care is blue ribbon flies in West Yellowstone. They, yeah, they, they, it's they know what they're, you know, they have access to the animals and the hides, mm -hmm. and they know they know how to select the stuff. Um, yeah, they're fly I, tires, right? They they know yeah, what yeah, they're they they, they know. Um, and that that woman. Um, that I talked to from uh, Delaware River Club. She, she, this was years ago that she was telling me about it. That the best stuff for like comparadons is it's from early season deer. Like for us here, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, there's early bow season, September, yeah. October, and it also comes only from the middle of the back. It's that yeah. strip right down the middle of the back, and. As you get toward the rump, the deer, the hair gets a little longer. So there's just, there's only, you know, it's about s maybe six inches wide. And, yeah, you know, a, like a back only, strap, right? Like right yeah, where you're. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just that little lane that goes down there. So you might, you know, get, get only a dozen patches like this out of that. Yeah. So it's. Well, that's the same on the underside of the deer, too, because of the deer belly hair, which is fantastic for spinning you know bass bugs things like that but yeah there's not a lot of it there no i i just um uh i actually um i i got a uh, skin from a friend of mine a full skin um he he got one uh a few weeks ago and the the amount of white you know 
true white true. belly fur that came yeah. hair that came off of that was very very minimal I mean, and and i and it's important because i think people like white is a hard color to get in anything natural because yeah. you can't dye something white it's already as light as yeah. it's ever going to go <laughs> it, yeah right you know and you I, know some you know some things like uh, pheasant tail for example you can bleach to knock it down a little bit and then it'll accept a color a little better but you're never go, you know white is white and that's, white is white yeah let me see if yeah. i got um Oh, it's it's up here. Uh, let me get rid of that Primo strip. Since we're talking about it, Ooh. yeah, Let's and get you big again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there, I, I'm not really sure uh, whether marketing what 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 it exactly is. There, there is deer body hair that you can yeah. buy, and it is not quite as hollow as deer belly hair. You yeah. can, I think you might actually, if I zoom in, you might actually be able to see the difference here. You can almost tell that this is more hollow and straw-like than this stuff is. And it so, seems oh, to be, from my experience too, that the hairs are more random in the way they flow. Like you look at the patch on your left, everything is kind of nice and straight, straight, like little soldiers on the patch, whereas deer belly hair has more curvature to it and more you know, randomness in how it lay on the animal on the hide. Yeah, it's almost like cowlicks, really. Yeah. You know, it get, gets kind of spun around. And you, you can see that little that, that little uh bend and kinky stuff. That yeah. that really kind of, and there's actually a crimp there uh where it's it's folded, and that's that's that tells you that it's true, true belly hair, where this yeah. is more from the side of the deer. Yeah. And um but you know, it, there's there's not a uh, finely marked line on the deer that says this is where the body hair stops. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's and, not there's not, not little dotted line. lines. You know, cut here. <laughs> <laughs> there almost is, but, but not quite. But like like you were saying about the the you can't dye white. Even this has got a tinge of that that you know uh, tanner uh, body hair as it's coming down into this white white belly hair. Yeah. So. Um, and this, you know, this is what we use for spinning those, those bass bugs. Uh, you, you can use the deer body hair. It, it spins. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but it can also be used for muddlers and, and, and things like that. And <clears throat> it, it also depends on how big a bug you're making. This it's always more hollow down by the, by the hide. And yeah. so if you're not making a really big bug and you're just tying with like the the last half inch of the butt and you're disregarding all this stuff even the body hair flares flares real nice yeah that's what right. that's what i tend we tend you know i tend to use we, we've got a, a spun and clip deer hair pattern called the gonfus that's very popular out west and it's literally uh, the whole fly is spun and clipped you put the body on and then uh once that's finished spinning we'll talk about that in a second you trim it up put the legs on then spin a head similar to a muddler head and and call it done it, it's it's uh, very effective i'm just looking for for soft hair i that's what i like to do i like to pinch it and feel it and if it feels soft and spongy i know it's probably going to spin and flare well for me yeah right? yeah you can get some i've got some deer i got lots of deer hide like you it's, as probably most of us out there know as soon as anybody finds out your fly tie and you become this depository for dead <laughs> animal hides and feathers <laughs> 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 you know you get the knock in the night and you're like what is this bag of box of stuff right 300 lifetime supplies but some of it is um you know it's very stiff and you just you know it's perfect for tails and things because you it will not flare at all it won't flare yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there was actually, a question just a second here tim there was a question from uh, dan here and it might be a good time can you discuss crinkly versus straight hair and uses um, you mentioned it with bucktail. We talked about it a bit with deer, uh, with the belly hair. Thought maybe it's an, an opportunity to sort of take a twenty thousand foot look down on that question. Yeah, to, to me, the the crinkly hair works well for for wings and tails. Okay, that yeah. that's that's where I use crinkly hair, like like bucktail um, that that doesn't really flare a whole lot. And with the straighter hair, um, that that's more for whether it's a wing that's canted back like a, mm -hmm. a caddis wing or whether it's, you know, a compare done uh, yeah. sticking up or um, even um, if you were doing a deer hair wing on, on a, say like on a Royal Coachman, a, a split 
um, deer hair wing. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you can use it there. So I also like that crinkly hair as well because it's you don't need a lot of it to make look make it look like there's more of it there than there really is. You know, it, it gives the illusion of bulk is a term I like to use. Yeah. You know, yeah. your clousers, so they look kind of full, but still that aids I think the translucence and the overall. You know, those clousers are generally a thin fly, right? For at least right. the way I tie, I like to yeah. tie them. Yeah, and you do. You need that kinky stuff. You're absolutely right. And like, if you look at the, I'm not going to name names, but some of the synthetic bucktail, it's just arrow straight. It, yeah, it's like it a paintbrush. Yeah, it does not work at all. Yeah. Yeah, and and I don't, you know, whether it's plastic or, or natural, it just doesn't have that natural look to it, that natural kind of kinky. Yeah, uh, I, you're probably stuff. like me. I've gone full circle back to bucktail. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it just you just can't I don't know to me you can't beat it for those applications for for wings and tails and streamers and those kind of things. So I, um, I tell you what, if if yeah. you have a second, should I tie just tie some in real quick? Yeah, sure. Let's show, let's get show what we're talking, what we're about, talking here. about. Yeah. Um, let me get my bucktail. Does that look okay to you, Phil? That looks fine. So more than fine. Just gonna get my thread started. Get some scissors here. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab what, what, what's left up here. This is up by the. I want to use some bigger scissors too. Oh, okay. I'm actually gonna hand that to you, Joan. Yep. That's okay. So I, I try to use some of my bigger scissors trimming this stuff. And you always do want to trim it right down by the hide. You don't want to have a bunch of short. Um, so this, this is just a, a little clump. I'll use it for the tail on this. this. And let me see if I can. This, since it's way up by the, the tip of the tail on the animal, I'm going to put a lot of thread tension on it. And it's, I mean, it really isn't flaring. It's way more spinning around the. The hook shank than flaring yeah. and and so i can take wraps rearward and as i get out here it's getting less and less hollow and so i mean even with a ton of pressure back here it doesn't really flare at all but you, this is what we were talking about guys that kind of natural kinky realistic lifelike looking yeah. stuff and um but what i'm going to do I'll tie in something that's just a little further down. Okay. I'm not going to take too much of it. So down in this one, you know, one third of the way down. And I think you'll see when I go to tie this and I'll, I'll pretend it's like a wing. Here's a little trick for you guys. I, been working on this one um if you you know how when you go to snip bucktail and you go like this and your scissors push it away yeah and it, it drives you absolutely nuts i'm not exactly sure why this works but if you hold it like this in reverse cut huh. it, it does exactly what you want it to do we got to get a physicist in here to figure that one out. Um, <laughs> yeah, if anybody's a physicist out there, <laughs> pipe, pipe in. <laughs> I just know it works. Yeah. And so with this one, I'm going to add a little pressure to it, and it's going to want to flare a little bit uh, as it's going back there for the wing. So it's a little more hollow down there, flares, flares a little bit more than that tail material. But if I go all the way down, and grab this stuff down here. All right, I'm gonna tie this in a little different. Whoa, sorry, sorry. <laughs> this stuff down here, let's snip it off square. And I'm even gonna snip the tip ends off. Now it's not gonna it's not gonna flare and spin the way body hair will, but it definitely has a good bit more pop yeah. than the rest of the stuff. 
And, and again, and, that just goes back to your point of where you choose to get the deer hair, to get the, uh, the, the uh, hair from um, has a big tail. influence on whether it, you know, what, what you want that hair to do in that situation. Yeah. Right? And that's, if, that's just, that's yeah. just on a bucktail. I mean, yeah. it's with, in a, in a, in a single piece. So um, lot, lots of variety. And you know what? Well, I got you guys here. Let me show you that back stuff. This was what I was talking about on the bucktail. And you can, you can basically tell that this is pretty hollow hair back here, right at the base of it. Beautiful colors in there. And I am going to clean this out. There's a lot of under fur. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And here I can snip the tips off. Oh, sorry. Lay it on there and almost like I'm, I'm going to do the same thing as I would do if I was spinning belly hair. I'm going to take a wrap and then a, another wrap and then give a squeeze. And you can see that really flares. Yeah. That, that's almost, almost like tying with belly hair. And, and that's important just Tim, because we had a question before the broadcast that, uh, you know, how do you make those spots on like frog patterns and, you know, where you've got the little focus spots and that's how you do it, right? You're just controlling. Uh, yep. You don't allow. So let's say that the whole fly in that case was white um, and you want a little green spot on the middle of its back. You're going to spin the rest of it. But that green spot, you're just going to hold it in place and basically flare it in, in one position. Right. So when you trim it, it's going to end up the, the end result will be a nice little uh, uh, green little, spot. Yeah, spot or a yeah. ring. And I, I can actually... I, I'm not using really the correct thread. You can see how hollow this stuff is. And this is this is going to flare. And um, I'm a little worried about breaking my thread here. I'm, I'm not not using uh, the correct thread. But uh, we'll talk uh, about we'll that talk. in a second. Yeah. Yeah. So just a little teeny piece like this. If I want to make a spot that goes right in the middle of that. second yeah hold it squeeze it from under here keep everything up on top and so if if you had this all packed down and trim that you'd end up with that little blue spot and yeah. you you can even go so far as see what i mean real quick don't want to keep you <laughs> this is good we can go for hours <laughs> <laughs> I, I have this weird love hate relationship with deer hair. Um, yeah, I think all, we all do. We love to hate it sometimes. And <laughs> yeah, but it's such a versatile material, and it kind of makes me feel good that it's, you know, it it's a very, um, it's not an exotic material. You, no, you know, it's readily it, available, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, you know, in North America, they're, you know, the right. Most, you know, even yeah, in New, I'm amazed when I go out your way out east in New Jersey, you know, driving along the turnpike is like, there's a deer. What's that poor thing doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we've got we've just got so many of the yeah. things. It's it's out of control. Um, so that's what that's what I end up with. And then, you know, if you were to trim it down, this is not going to work out exactly right. But trim it. No, way I down. get the idea. Yeah. Like you're trimming a bass bug. Yeah. That's how you end up with that, you know, that that beautiful little dot that's got a black circle around it. And, yeah. Um, and, you know, most of the time you're really when you're doing that, you're after you tie these clumps in, you're compressing the lift living heck out of them. And so yeah. it's a much tighter looking thing. But, but that's thing. basically oh, that's it. Cool. That's that's uh, the way it's done. And it looks like we had somebody. Uh... Oh, let's see. I know the. I know this person. I spent some time together paddling around in Utah. Uh, on the cut, the end is nearer to the pinch point, so it doesn't have as much of a fulcrum of the hair to push it away. In the video, you can see it deflect, but the close pinch makes it deflect less. So there you go, Tim. Okay, that's a, he's a physicist. <laughs> yeah, or or at least uh, understands it better than we do. But yeah. uh, it, you know, and it was an interesting point because that angled cut is important when you're tying in those wing hairs to get a to aid the tapered head, but B you're getting all, cause one of the most frustrating things is you get it tied in and then we all naturally start playing with it 
and we pulled it all out. <laughs> Pull it all out. Yeah. 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 Cause we didn't get a good, by having that angled cut, you're going to bind all of those fibers down to, you know, get that thread pressure right to the shank. Yeah. It's in, and so people, I don't want to lead people astray with that one though, Phil. Yeah. But again, <laughs> just real quick. if you would. <laughs> Sure. Um, when, when, when you do that, um, let me find my good white bucktail again. There we are. Um, and I, I do this, you know, clousers and um, deceivers and everything else. And, and Bob, Bob Clouser actually watched me do this at the tying symposium. And yeah. I don't think he was real thrilled with me. <laughs> it's not, not really his method of doing things, but, um, you know, to, uh, yeah, one wonderful <laughs> guy. He really is. He is. Uh, he's, I, I remember one of the first times I watched it, I, you know, when you and I do tying demos, we've usually got four or five or six patterns we're going to do in an hour. And he takes one hour to do, one. A box, yeah, to do one of his clousers. And it's just one of the most, educational and and funny experience he's such a good tire and such a great storyteller um so again i'm gonna angle my scissors back and snip like that the yeah. the key thing here is you you need to get that butt that butt that bottom corner yeah they that has to be beyond your tying thread in other words you don't want to start like this or you're in trouble yeah, you need to get that butt end, that little corner right beyond it, and then when you go to tie in, you get that nice ramp, and you don't have that cliff that you jump off of. Yep, and, and yet you've got the the hair is well and truly tied down. Yeah, and in. you're you've got yeah. the bite all the way back through, um, and it just it's one of those things that that just works for me. I don't know whether yeah. it works for everybody else or not. No, that's but that's the way I try to do any yeah. of that kind of stuff. So yeah. let's talk about some other, you know, we talked mostly about deer hair, but you and I discussing this prior was talking about some other hair as well. Like you mentioned elk. Yeah. Um, I like to use elk. It's, um, you know, when I'm tying some of our dries, um, we do a lot of some still water caddis we get out that are, that are massive. They're like uh, golden stone size. Um, I like it because I can just see it. It stands up um, and it's, it tends to flare a little less than your, your, um, your deer hair. So yeah. if you're looking for something that's not going to get all flared and all over the place, that that's a better choice for it. And of course, you got elk hair, cow elk, yearling oh. elk. It's again, it's all the same as deer hairs. Many different variations. Yeah, and I uh, the, like the different different seasons again matter. Um, and where on the hide? Yeah, where on the animal it's taken from? I've yeah. uh, I got some some here i my my collection of elk hair is almost as big as my collection of white-tailed deer hair yeah. and again this is only just a smidgen of it but um so bull cow and even within this is just elk body hair bleached yeah. and it's a little bit shorter these that are labeled um this is cow elk and this is bull elk very mm -hmm. different coloration yeah. and even i think i've got some you know and i'm not from elk country so you know the colors are just all over the place yeah uh, you know, <laughs> yeah like <laughs> i say i tend to use it when i you know for spinning and things like that i like deer hair but if I'm wanting something lighter and less prone to flaring, um, you know, I, there's a, a pattern, and I'm going to see if I can bring it in. We call the Michelox Sedge. Um, Actually, this is the one. Uh, I'm trying to find it here, and I'm not doing it, doing much good. Uh, so I'll dig it out later. But uh, it uses, you know, different stacks of deer hair along its length to give that caddis the tent-like shape of the wing because it's a big pattern, like sixes and eights. Uh, it's a big bug, and uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think I can kind of simulate this and, and show what. Um, uh, unfortunately, I gotta do a little vice vice jaw change here to 
see that and go up just a little. Sorry, guys. I'll be with you in a second. Keep talking, Phil. Okay. I'll keep, I'll, uh, keep talking. <laughs> say something so, interesting. Okay. Well, that'll be a pinch. Uh, we got another uh, another question here. I'll bring oh, that good. in. Oh, good. Good. Um, I recently got some Nutria skins, including masks. Any idea but cutting zonkers of what you can use Nutria for? Oh, never, never used Nutria. I've used it a little. I think some guys use it for tails. I remember seeing one in a backyard in Oregon, <laughs> like an actual live one. But no, I've never seen one of those before. Um, but Nutria, I know some huh? you can make zonker hair out of it and, and things like that. But uh, there is, I you know what I would recommend who um, Jim Schulmeyer and Ted Leeson's book. Um, what was that uh, big thick guide to fly tying? Tons of tips in that it was a, a yeah the john saying the encyclopedia and she's the bookstore person yeah so. yeah, yeah she would know right. <laughs> um, so he, he that book would have great Im information on both uh nutri itself and uh some of its uses that would be a uh, my first place to go for something like that me, but it's I, a waterborne animal so it's going to have some great properties for flies because its hair's not going to mat. It's going to have some translucence to it. It's it's going to be uh, a good fly tying material. Yeah, the bench side introduction to fly tying. Bench side, that, side bench side, yeah, bench side uh, tires reference, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Well done, Joni. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit while you're doing that about caribou. You were mentioning in a recent trip to uh, New Newfoundland, Newfoundland. Labrador. Yeah, yep. Newfoundlander. Um, about caribou. And to me, that is perhaps the best spinning hair you've got right it yeah just, it, it loves it it does it, it really surprised me because it looks thinner to me than than deer hair in a way and it's it short that's probably its only thing is it's it's challenging to manage sometimes because you you know a, a, probably a good tall stack it's not as long as deer hair that's that's um um thing but i i was using it for years on tying irresistibles because yeah, it, i i it have just some loves right. to flare right here yeah and to me you know down there as compared to deer hair it looks looks pretty fine but yeah. it uh it it flares like crazy i i um i'm kind of committed to this elk hair thing at the moment but um, <laughs> that's okay we can come back to it we can come back to it <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get back to that um yeah in just a second i i do want to clean this stuff out so so this is elk hair i am going to stack it real quick just because the wing would look terrible if it wasn't. And we'll talk about stacking in a second. So way too much hair there. That's the other thing is with, with a lot of this, the, the best thing you can do with your tying, whether it's elk hair, caddis wings, or comparadons, is reduce the amount of hair. Yeah. And it's it's not a universal solution, but it, it's it's a real good first step. So wh when I'm doing this, just I'll show you my technique for the, and I've gotten it a little uneven. What what I like to do, like for an elk hair wing, is I do I like to take my scissors, use the front edge of the hook eye as a guide, and snip it off. Just bring it back a little bit. Give my bobbin a counterclockwise spin so it doesn't do that. And so when I pull it down, it it just flares right there. I missed some of the clump. But yeah. like you were saying, we I, I can really flare it back here, mm -hmm. make it stick up, or we can do those more channeling wraps. Yeah, and that was one of the questions we have. How do we make that low? You know, we don't want the wing to, to flare. And, uh, you know, flare, I think the example, yeah. I was talking about that Miklox sedge pattern. I'll try and bring a picture of that up shortly. But uh, I was thinking the underwing on hopper patterns, where you're going to yeah. put a, a quill wing or a synthetic wing over top of that. And you don't want it to obviously flare up and, and knock that, make that wing look weird or just make it look wrong. Um yeah, so yeah. I've done the I've done the channeling wraps, and then yeah. I can wrap back down and finish it off. Whereas if I hadn't done the channeling wraps, I just took tight wraps all the way back. 
Yeah, it's going it, to go it, all. You know. It's going to go. It's going to flare. It's going to want to go around. It's going to do all that stuff. Sometimes that's desirable, but just a few of those channeling wraps, not yeah. quite as much pressure, and yeah. you're back down to the low wing. Yeah, it sucks it. Sucks it right down. Sucks it right down. Yeah. All right. Um, well, Tell me where we are. <laughs> well, two plays. We could carry on here and and show some spinning techniques, or maybe we can take a step back and show some of the different tools and um, equipment and gadgets we use to better manage deer hair. Where do you want to? We're going to cover them anyway. I'm thinking since you've got the vice going there, maybe we'll just show some. Some uh, you touched on spinning a little bit, but I know a lot of people tires I work with and talk to they get frustrated with spinning hair. Um, yeah, it, and, and just want some ways to you know the basics to understand how it all works. Yeah, I will. I will do my best. I'm just gonna finish this guy off. Having okay. a little. And while we're, uh, we're doing that, we've got a question here from uh, Phil McCartney. Look, Phil's out there. That's good to see. Um, do you tie in squirrel hair for streamer wings as you do bucktail? Squirrel hair is slippery. Yeah, squirrels. <laughs> I, squirrel hair, hair is beautiful stuff for wings, uh, but it yep. is, boy, it, that, that is like the slipperiest stuff known to man. Yeah. And it, if I'm using squirrel, and I love it for like Atlantic salmon flies. Yeah. Super glue is your friend. I, I, I know a lot of, I know a lot of people don't well, like that idea. Yeah. But it if you um it's also a real good way to cheat on it on an L care caddis wing, for example. Yeah. Um is well I think most of us want to fly to tie a fly and get out fishing, right? And if we have to cheat a little bit to get there, um it, it's it's all good, I think. Okay, so so what you do is if you're tying in that squirrel, I tie it in very much like I did that bucktail. I, I make the same angled cut like on a um, – if I was doing it on the wing of, say, a, a blue charm, mm -hmm. um, Atlantic salmon fly. But before I even put it down on top of the hook shank, I put a glob of super glue right on the hook shank yep. and then place it on top, take a loose wrap, and then give a tight wrap. And that tight yeah. wrap – the pressure is what sets the super glue. Yeah. And oh my gosh. Does it work well? Now, are you using brushable super glue or the gel kind, or does it matter? Um, I, I use um, my my favorite is uh, Fly Tire Z Mint. Yeah. And it, it just because the viscosity is just right, it's halfway between the thick and the thin, and it has um, a dandy little brush that comes with it. Yeah. And just makes it real easy. If you want to, uh, you can cut down the brush, make it, make it. You just take it a uh, razor blade and just reduce the number of bristles on the brush. Yeah, I've really seen tires too. Also, cut them on an angle. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And and but yeah, that one drop of super glue really really helps with with that slippery squirrel because squirrel's so beautiful too. It's got the oh, it you know natural colors going back and it has a little like we were saying a little kinkiness to it. Yeah. Um, so it gives the illusion of movement and just looks natural. And I like and, the contrast it have. It's not all one solid color, which nothing yeah. in nature tends to be that way. So it's right. just, I think, a natural appeal. Fish just see that and like. Maybe they ate a lot of squirrels. When they were younger. I don't know. <laughs> that explains why zonkers and squirrel dubbing so good. <laughs> let me um, hey. let me uh see if I can. Well, I'm gonna have to change vice heads again. Good golly, Tim! All right, I'll do it that way. Other questions? Yeah, we were yeah. talking about spinning deer hair. Yeah, so that, that while you're getting set up, let's. We talked about the the you know that obviously deer belly hair spins very well. Um, you're looking for me that soft, spongy feel to it. I yeah. feel that's going to spin well. Anything that's you know stiff and and it's just not going to flare at all or spin at all. Uh, that's the first part of it is getting the right stuff. And then cleaning the hair and prepping it's critical too, isn't it? About getting that under fur out of it, the short fibers. Um, well, why, they, why don't we take care of that, Phil? We can do we can do the tools, the cleaning. Sure. All, yeah, let's, all in one, right? Okay, yeah. Let's take care of the of, thread. Yep, yeah, because that, that's all important too because uh, – um, yeah, I like a, like a one, you know, something, a heavier thread that's wider. That's not going to cut the, uh, a, it's not going to break when you apply tension and B it's not going to cut the material. Yeah. 
Yeah. And l love it or hate it, um, this is gel spun. I, yes. I, you know, some people don't don't like it. I didn't for a long, long time. I'm starting to get used to it. Uh, this is a hundred denier, mm -hmm. uh, Vivas in black. Yeah. Um, it it's great stuff. I would suggest not using it with ceramic white ceramic tubes on your bobbins. Yeah, uh, it tends it's like to the old Kevlar it. threads, right? Or yeah, it <laughs> Stain, stains it a bit and yeah, and, and can uh, do some damage. But let, let's just do a little spinning because we, we we had talked about it, Phil. Yeah. The other thing when you're when you're using the um, the gel spuns, they don't like scissors um, unless your scissors are really sharp. A friend of mine made this for me, and it's actually for scoring the top of homemade bread. Uh, but it holds a razor blade, and and a razor blade works really, really. It's just two rubber washers, really cool. Oh, okay. yeah, you make that yeah. yourself, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, really cool little tool, yeah. and a lot of. We'll do a nice pink butt on here. Kind of misconceptions about spinning deer hair, and the, probably the biggest one is that you're supposed to spin only on a bare hook shank. Yeah, that was and, one. Uh, that's not so I've, I, I've snipped from down here. Yeah, not <laughs> it's not really not really true. And since we're talking about it, you can use all sorts of different things to prep your deer hair and flea comb. Yeah, works really well. Little mustache comb that you got with your manscaper kit. I'll leave that alone. Okay. <laughs> I got this super cool one. I think it's made out of bone from Hairline. My favorite, though, is this mini switchblade eye, eyebrow, eyelash, I don't know, comb that I got down at the drugstore. It's got... You spend a lot of time in that section, uh, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I got to ask, what is with the uh, plastic brass knuckles set there? <laughs> this guy? Yeah. This is um, what, <laughs> one of my favorite, uh, and I'll, I'll use it in just a second, for, for packing packing deer hair. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've got uh, one of the, uh, like I see it in your top left there, one of those brassy uh, packers. Yeah, I, I'm not wild about this thing. I want to get one of Pat Cohen's Fugly Stackers. I don't know whether you've ever seen those. Yeah. It, uh, they're huge. Yeah, but they're great because it eats yeah. your fingers. <laughs> so I'm just going to snip the tips off, yeah. and we're going to go up here. And I will do my best. I'm going to just take this clump, put it on top, and I'm going to go around once, around twice. And I'm going to push it around, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to watch it spin, but to me that push is really important and it gets just it started it gets it started and helps to get it evenly distributed around the hook shank a lot of times if you don't push it around it's just this kind of big clump that goes around yeah and um and then so it's flared so these are almost touching i do like to work my way through yeah if i'm doing this just to make sure it's locked down and then, like we were saying, you can take your little packer, go go like this, or <clears throat> for me, oh, that's too too big for that one. You can actually use your your stacker. Yeah, and it's just to stop you from impaling your thumb and forefinger. Yeah, your <laughs> and it, you know. it packs it well in there, and so you can really just go down down the line if you're if you're building up, say, a bass bug. I'll put another clump in here. I'm not even going to clean this one out. I do like to alternate. If I went butts back on the first one, I, I flip it around. I don't know whether this means anything or not. So yeah. I'll have the thinner part pointing back. That's a good tip. Although or, most times, by the time I've spun it around in my hands two or three times, I don't know where the butts are. Yeah, yeah well, well, what's where. Yeah. And again, just, just pack it and you just stack it in there. Yeah. Do you yeah. sometimes, Tim, I found you've got it stacked like that. So I'll take the thread and advance it forward in two or three open turns to get it forward of what I've spun. I'll spin the next clump there. 
like right? this sort of out in front and then sh pack it back and push it back yeah. yeah that was i i um i think i saw pat Cohn doing that and yeah if if any of you guys have ever seen his deer hair work it is wow it's artwork it's not it is total artwork. total artwork um yeah. uh there there are a couple good guys uh joe jackson now um yeah. Sergeant Bassmaster is is um, doing incredible stuff. Let me. Yeah, you see some of those bluegill patterns and things they do. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, you'd be afraid. It's almost like you it's like a traditional Atlantic salmon fly. You don't want to throw that in the water. It might get chewed up by something. Yeah, uh, Joe Jackson last year was nice enough, and he he gave my wife Joan here uh, one of his hummingbirds. That's just insane. Yeah. Just gorgeous. So we're gonna try your technique, little yeah. spin, yeah, and then pack it back. And the reason I like to do that sometimes is just I can see where I'm. You know, it's about seeing where I'm putting the wraps and everything, and then push it back because it'll slide. Yeah, but I mean, there's that's three clumps, and I've covered yeah. not even a quarter of an inch because it's it's packed back in there. Yeah. Um, but like if we wanted to i'm going to go back in here i can get myself back in there and make one of those uh let me do a how about uh what do i got here so tim there's a question about the size of the clump the diameter and the i think it's, the, it's always been i was always you know a a uh like a pencil or a pipe pencil. cleaner. Yeah, pencil diameter has always been sort of the accepted standard. Yeah, that's so yeah. hard to judge, though, Phil. You know, yeah, it really it is. is. It and, really and, 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 and for me, you know, I remember when I was first learning how to tie, still remember it. It, it was frustrating getting yeah. un understanding. And unfortunately, I think the only way to really get it is through experience. Just, yeah, just, just do feeling it. Because if you get too much, it's hard to get the thread pressure down to the shank. And it doesn't, it spins, but it's not really on the hook very well. And right, it will pull right. out. Just of course, yeah. And of yeah. course, if it's really tiny, it's going to take you forever to make any kind of mass of a, of a, of a body on there or whatever you're trying to do. Um, John's got a question here too. John, thanks for asking that. Thanks for everybody who's asking questions. What's the best way of keeping the collar separate from the head on mudlers when trimming the head? So we'll get to that in a, in a bit when we're trimming. Yeah. So keep that yeah, in mind I, I will there's a there's a trick to that one and um who did i see do oh it was a uh, uh gunner brommer yeah, yeah. gunner's fly, um, flies i i just was watching one of his videos the other day and he did it and explained it really really well um he was tying a sculpin pattern and so yeah. just just imagine it being a, like a big muddler okay yeah and the, the important thing was he tied in that clump with the tips pointed back, right? Yeah. But he and tied it in as you normally would, and the front butt ends flared as they will do. Yeah. But he cut those butt ends off all the way down to the thread wraps. Because if you're doing that, you have the the you know the pointy stuff coming back. No matter what you do, those butt ends are going to point toward the front of the hook. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're going to leave that gap between the stuff that points back and the stuff. You understand what I mean? Yeah. And then yeah. the, the back head of the muddler. Whereas if you snip them off and then tie in another clump of hair, you have those other ones that want to point back as well. And yeah. so they come right back into the, the, the tipped hair that's pointing rearward. Yeah, that's going to be used for the wing kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and it, w what a great tip! I mean, really. Yeah, I, I think I've seen Kelly Gallup do that too when he's tying his zoo cougars. He'll put the collar in, and tie it in like a wing, basically, and then trim it super flush. Because I think a lot of tires try to use those butts as part right, of the spun right. head. This way is cutting them right, like you said, right down to the thread, and then spinning the head as a separate operation. The the flared right. tips have nothing to do with the head, right? right there. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, and it, as badly as you want to leave those butt ends on there, yeah. snip them off and put put start afresh. You know, with a plus. A I also find when you do that, 
that you're you you spend all that time and effort to get like on a zoo cougar where you're trying to imitate a sculpt and you you're trying to get those that collar on top the top half of the fly and then if you incorporate that into spinning all of a sudden you're you know your tips may go for a spin and be underneath and off oh, to one side yeah. And yeah not after you spend all that time getting them into position yeah so i back back to spinning i'll i'll try to do this fairly quickly i have a little teeny clump of black bucktail and i'm going to put this right on top go around again and guys i i am by no means an expert at this um this the the this is not my thing um but you can see i've got i've got that black in there and i think i can kind of make that go around like that and you know this is the way you make those little um uh, those groovy little spots and stuff one more little dot again i'm not even gonna really clean this stuff Everybody staying with us, Phil, you think, or am I, am I, I losing? I think so, people? yeah. We've still got uh, right. anywhere from 80 to 90 people at any one time. Oh, so, good. You know, I think it's the different time zones. You know, the Pacific time zone comes in, some more join us. And you're, you're, we're, you're keeping them entertained with your... <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> flailing around with deer hair. <laughs> Maybe that's how we should have done it. Yeah. No, I think we're getting near the end of our stuff anyway, right? So, yeah, we're getting close. We should probably yeah. talk about some more of the tools, and yeah, I I, I can incorporate some of them here. Real so, quick. another question yeah. I got here, Tim, that we should talk about is what's the difference between spinning hair and flaring hair? Um, well, let's do it. We, well, I you think just, in, in some you, ways you've sort of done it with your different colorations of hair. You flared it into position, so it didn't rotate around the shank like spun hair would is that fair right. to say right yeah. you 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 place it and you kind of like this you just place it i i didn't even clean this yeah. wrap around and then you just want to make sure that you just seat it right there and keep your fingers under there get that locked yeah yeah you it, Deer hair is, is hands-on at best, right? So you're really not letting it rotate. Right. So I got that stack on on the top. That That's yeah. where it's going, um, and that's where I want to keep it. And again, you know, if I've, you seen, I've seen some people tie mice patterns like that, right? And as opposed to spinning it and then spending all that effort trimming the base, they just flare it on top of the shank and trim that to be uh, the top half to look like the mouse, and the bottom half is flush to keep the gape clear. Right, without right, going right. through the whole spinning process. I think Gary Borger had a mouse pattern he did like that. He just put clumps on and just held them and flared them into position. One on top. Real, I think he called the fly a down and dirty mouse because that's how yeah. fast it was. Just as fast as you could tie clumps on and flare it in position and move ahead. And you had this, you know, this mouse looking, you know, how mouse patterns often are, but it was flush underneath practically. Maybe a little bit of stubble from the butts, but nothing. Yeah. Well, and just yeah. in for for me anyway, watching uh, Pat Cohen do it for for yeah. years, most of what he was doing uh, is um, is placing as opposed to spinning. Yeah, on on his really intricate patterns. Um, so this this is a wholly terrible mess. But probably uh, catch we, <laughs> that'll be the next killer <laughs> pattern. <one. Yeah. laughs> but you, you do need. Good sharp scissors to mm -hmm. to do this. Um, not not your delicate fine tip. No, <laughs> no, not your dry fly shears. By no. you don't want to be doing that. But the, these are these are gorgeous scissors, yeah. and so you can go in and just you know snip off real close, and then then that's when you start seeing that, you know, as I didn't pack this or anything, but that's where you start you seeing see those. Yeah, we're getting little, the effect. You can see it. Yeah, you're you're getting the design and the sides and everything but along with that there's also you can use um razor blades yeah and they, not regular razor they have to be the double edge they're the only ones that are sharp enough regular straight edge just aren't going to cut it plus that that double edge adds that risk factor of bleeding to death <laughs> yeah, true <laughs> <laughs> and I do like to live on the edge. Yeah. Um, oh, is that oh, a yeah, there, you see that? <laughs> a fun in there. I like that. 
and so you can tighten it up and add some more bow to it and yeah Fortunately, it has it, it it has an end point on here, so you don't just over bend it and blow the thing up. But yeah. you you can waste like an hour's worth of work quick, fast, and in a hurry with one of yeah. these things. You just kind of wrote you know rock them back and forth, and it it tears off hair, makes everything nice and smooth. And but yeah, because you you'd spend a lot of time with scissors and in one yeah firm push. You've you've like I, I like to use them when I'm trimming the undersides of a fly that I want to be flush to keep the hook gape open, sort of one push, and then I just go in and do some fine tuning with scissors. Yeah. If you don't, and you guys didn't hear this from me, but if you don't have one of these things. Yeah, Hairline makes that, don't they? The I I'm not sure where I got this one. Yeah. It's a Stonfo. So oh, okay, Stonfo. Okay, another great tool manufacturer. But if you're really, really careful, <laughs> watch me screw this up. You can break these blades, okay? Yeah. And then with your fingers, again, don't try this at home, kids. You can make the same curve, and just takes like anything a bit of practice. Have yeah. band aids on hand. Yeah. Nine one one on speed yeah. dial and, <laughs> and and you're you're good to go. So why you would can, you need nine one one on speed? <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're bleeding out, Phil. <laughs> yeah, I guess that was a line from a comedy series. I can't, maybe it was married with children. Why didn't you call nine one one? She said I couldn't remember the number. Number. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a question just on the outside, um, and you were talking about. Uh, changing heads on your fly on your vice and i know it's nothing to do with tying but i i guess that got a question what does that mean here it is uh ron was asking tim keeps mentioning he's changing heads on the vice can you elaborate on that okay and it, it's important too i mean with, with deer hair spinning you're putting a lot of pressure when, when you're when when you're spinning mm-hmm so I have I have a Regal Revolution vice and I, I have a little plug there. Yeah, I love that. But I got the same one, so yeah, okay so, with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it you know it'll uh, let me get a saltwater hook in here. It shows better in the jaw. I don't know whether you can see it there. Actually, little yeah, you can see it right there. It, it, like little uh, little detents. Yeah, and so when you stick a hook in there. You get it in there. You can get it lined up so it's horizontal, but these things they're, they're just not going anywhere. Yeah. And so because of those detents, and it just can't move. And as good as you know, Regal stainless steel jaws like this one are, there is no detent in them. They they yeah. go absolutely flat. And so if you and I don't want to mess up my jaws here, they're very very strong. But you can move the hook. Yeah, because you jaw. just smooth on smooth, right? That's, yeah, it's metal yeah. on metal. It's, it's like a pair of stainless. pliers, right? Flat yeah. nose versus, and, a, yeah. Yeah, and so you, the, the big game head has got that extra grip. And I would highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be Regal. There, You know, other manufacturers um, have detents in their heads and, and their, um, gosh, I think it's Pika has actually got this hook one that's really, yeah. really cool that goes around the, the bend of the hook. All right. So uh, asking for their co-worker, Chris, I like these kind of questions. <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Um, Tim, oh, what's, the, what's the one thing uh, with tying hair that really gets your hackles up? Um, first of all, <laughs> Zig, Chris called and said to give you a shout out. So uh, gl glad you could join us tonight. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, what What's the one thing about tying hair that really gets my hackles up? Um, <laughs> uh, probably everything that we've been talking about is, is mm -hmm. the extreme variability of it. And you, you base it, as far as I'm concerned, whether it's bucktail, whether it's belly hair, body hair, or heaven forbid, comparadon or uh, elk hair for elk hair caddis, you need to put hands on it and, and see it and feel it to really understand whether you're getting what you want or not. And so in, unless there's somebody um, that, that you really trust, I'm going to throw out blue ribbon flies again. Yep. 
what, what was your other one that you you like for hair? Um, Nature Spirits got some good yep. stuff. Um, I know, you know, if you if you're going from online, keep mentioning Kelly Gallup because Kelly's famous for all the the hair work he likes to do on his zoo cougars and woolly sculpins, and Kelly's a real master with hair as well. Um, yeah. you know, for, for those kind of things. So a shop like that is going to be buying the right hair for their customers. Right. And it's well. going to be knowledgeable about it. And, and I'd highly recommend, you know, if you can't put hands on it yourself uh, is to talk to those guys, tell them what you want, tell them what patterns you're trying to tie. You know, what what uh, you're trying to do. Yeah. And the, they'll, they'll help you out because it, it yeah. matter. I mean, you can spend a f small fortune and not get the right stuff. And s a specifically if you're just starting out doing this you you don't know whether it's you and your technique or whether it's the material and, yeah, and so you you're can, trying to eliminate as many variables as you can that's that's so, it so then it only falls back on you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way i go oh well i've, I've yeah. got everything else taken care of so it's my fault <laughs> yeah. yeah tell me what well you're using all the right stuff it's yeah, so just, it's you too. suck at tying yeah. yeah what's that there was a shirt there was a fly shop out in west yellowstone used to have a on there, you know, it's not the fly, you suck. <laughs> I, had to, I bought that shirt instantly upon seeing it. So, um, another question here, Tim, um, before we get into the tools a little bit more, um, how about Josh Varner's new line of hair products? He seems very proud of his product. Do you, I'm not aware of that. Are you? No, no. Um, I'll have to check those out. And recommend everybody else does because it's uh, if he's proud of his product, that usually means he's got something good. So I've yeah. made a note of that. That <laughs> could be a whole new source <laughs> because, yeah, you want to find getting the right stuff is important in any fly tying uh, situation. Um, and there was a question here about uh, material storage. Yeah. From Trout Bugs. Uh, Please comment. Um, and we can probably do a whole thing on that one night. Uh, preventing carpet beetles destroying materials. Uh, yeah, I've had numerous infestations over the <laughs> years I've been tying, um, and it, it is like the worst, and yeah. particularly with hackles, with necks, and, and yeah, they uh, go for the uh, good stuff. <laughs> oh, they do. They, they, they can tell a price tag. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you take the price tags off, and that'll yeah, that'll that'd be the first away. thing. Then they're gonna yeah. you know they're munch chenille or something. <laughs> <laughs> low bug yarn yeah, yeah eat all that chenille I don't, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> so i i am still i'm old school and i'm a mothball guy i know it stinks yeah. i know it's not great for you health wise there's some uh i guess respiratory concerns with it but it is really the only thing that i've found i i am ziploc bags for everything yeah okay and i have multiple multiple chests of drawers I like the wooden drawers for storing stuff. Um, some of them I can actually fit like shoebox. Yeah, I buy a things. lot of those. And I've got, I also like to get things up off the floor whenever possible. Yep. Even if it's a one of those plastic drawer cabinets you can get, it's There's off a whole... the floor an inch, right? Those little guys that yep. just, maybe they can't jump. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but because it was interesting because I had a question asked me today through an email or social media, I can't remember, but how long do materials last? And I was thinking, God, I've got some natural materials that are 20 plus 30 years old, right? They're just, you know, as long as you take care of them, like you said, the mothballs in, in Ziploc bags, in containers, um, they'll last you, they'll last you forever. For, yeah. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I did an interview, um, uh, just the other day I was talking about it and I, it, it's almost like for me, a trip down memory lane. Um, I, I have materials from fly shops that haven't been in business for 40 years. Yeah, I've got that and, too. I like to pull it out. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's almost like looking at all for, for you guys that are old enough to understand, like looking at old album covers and it just brings back memories. You yeah. Know? You don't it, even want to use the stuff. Right? Yeah, you, yeah. It's fine. Cause somebody we're way off topic here, but somebody <laughs> gave me a whole peacock skin. Right, a raccoon had got it and killed it, but I guess it got startled. So really, all it basically did was wrung the bird's neck. So he skinned the bird out, brings his beautiful, like it's a beaut, and it's such a beautiful thing. I I don't think I've taken four feathers off of it. I just oh, really wrong to, you know, I've got enough other peacock swords and breast feathers and all and hurl and and everything, but it's just such a beautiful bird. <laughs> Afraid to yeah. start picking it to pieces, which is probably bad, but. Uh, yeah. You know, that said, though, I, I um, 
uh, some of the early problems that I had were, were my own fault, you know, roadkill or when I was out hunting, bringing back mm -hmm. a pheasant skin or a duck skin. And I, I, I just, I, there, there's literally only one person on the planet that I will accept stuff from that's, yep. that's an individual. Um, and it's just because he does just immaculate work with, uh, with his bird and animal skins. It's, and, uh, it's boutique stuff. He's, he's a good friend, but otherwise I, I will turn it down. I just yep. cannot for, for a couple of pheasant tail feathers or, fe yep. you know, I, I just can't risk it. Um, yep. and, uh, I had one, um, uh, snowshoe rabbit feet were what had bugs uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. And, and that's just, one of the, you know, the votes, I think we had a question about dyeing materials, right. And, and there's so many good companies doing their own dyeing and, and they're doing, they're cleaning the product, they're prepping it. So, you know, when you buy it, that you're getting that risk taken care of for you. There's yeah. not going to, they can't afford from a business perspective to be known as, Oh, you're the company that is, ships out you know bugs, bugs. yeah yeah you're yeah. you're pretty well out of business so that's one of the you know people i know do like to die to get those specific colors but it's a you know you've you can turn your kitchen pink or your dog pink if you're not careful yeah yeah um so yeah and i see a question i saw a thing uh cedar blocks um as well um deter and i haven't tried that or cedar shavings uh, uh tom says here as well yeah, I've tried the cedar. It smells way better than the mothballs. I'll give you that. But yeah, I, I I really like that that high level chemistry to make sure that I'm killing everything. Um, <laughs> just yeah, it doesn't cause hair loss at all, Tim. Look, <laughs> <laughs> or gray hair for that yeah, matter. At you least know? you've got it. It either yeah. falls out or goes gray. Um, Zig asks another question here about freezing pellets or feathers. Um, does that minimize the risk? And it does. It, it helps. Yep. And I, I do, I have, um, I, <laughs> Joan's laughing. <'cause laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joan's, right. Joan's Tim's wife, for those of you who aren't familiar. Yeah. It just, uh, yeah, I, I hope nobody from PETA ever opens our freezer. <laughs> I'm in deep trouble. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Freezing, uh, leaving them outside, having a quarantine area for yeah. stuff like that, uh, helps. Uh, but I still, it's, uh, I want like three, four levels of protection. Uh, so moth, you know, initial freezing, if I get stuff in that I'm a little suspect of, uh, but again, I, I really don't take it anymore. Um, so freeze it, leave it outside, keep it in a sealed uh, Rubbermaid container, something like that away from the rest mm -hmm. of my materials. Yeah, um, kind of a quarantine process. Yeah. Yeah. No. Once it, once it comes in, um, it goes in Ziploc bags and then I, I leave the, um, the mothballs just in the drawers and then the Ziploc bags go in the yeah. drawers. And I've even heard of people microwaving too, right? But I'd be I, worried I heard that, that too, but I tried it and it kind of messes up skins. If there's any Plus, moisture. Joe the, doesn't appreciate it. Yeah. It's, it's a little stanky too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You would think, you know, stories. Yeah. <laughs> I had a friend many years ago gave me some mallard wings. And he had them in a plastic bag. And this is all my fault because there was still a little r residue on the, you know, where they were attached to the bird. And I was in a risk panic. I threw them on my fly tying bench. And as any fly tying bench, it soon became a sea of crap. And all of a sudden I'm tying one night and I can hear Russell, 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 like something's moving. Oh. Right. And I look in the bag and there's maggots everywhere. Right. And they had, I, those little guys can motor when they sense dangers about, cause I'm trying to now pick them up. Now they're on the, a couple dropped on the carpet and they don't like bright light. So they're going like mad. My wife comes in, sees me and I, I dropped some hooks. I told her and she said, well, you better be careful. <laughs> like picking up all these, man. I think that was one of the last times I, like you, I took um, roadkill in because I think most of us, when we start tying flies again, we become everybody's repository for yeah. dead stuff. Right. So, <laughs> Yeah, I, sh I should tell these guys because I, it's the way we uh, before what we started with with bucktail. Yeah. I, and again, you, you kind of have to have hands on and a bucktail look for stuff that's pliable, that's bendable. And I, I hate to say it just just has a little funk to it. Um, <laughs> So if you ever see Tim, everyone in a shop smelling bucktails, sniffing bucktails, 
<laughs> if he because puts it back, don't buy it. <laughs> I, I just cracked this one. I, yeah. Stuff. This, it's usable, but stuff yeah. that cracks, it's it's just dried out, and the 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 hair is just dried out as well, and, yeah, and something like this. It's kind of over processed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like this is the just yeah. money. So um, just before we finish up here, we talked about combs, packers, scissors, thread choices. We didn't touch, on, we didn't touch ha hair stackers. Hair stackers. Yeah. Let just me get. Uh, yeah. I, I like re really not just for deer hair, but for kind of all my stacking uses. I think that's what I want to say. I don't want to cut myself on a razor blade. I have two stackers and I'm pretty sure the world would end if I ever lost one or both of these. They, <laughs> I've, I've, I, I've, it's one of those this in my uh, Matarelli, uh, they are they're tools that I've had almost since I started tying. And um, so wide mouth and heavy, heavy brass. I have some aluminum ones that just don't cut it. They just don't have that that stacking horsepower yeah. that comes with heavy brass. <clears throat> and, you know, a nice, nice big one. Uh, for for deer deer hair for spinning or, or whatever muddler heads and then little little teeny guy for comparaduns and elk hair wings and stuff like that yeah. and two of them do do pretty well for me um and there are other i have this one that i got from uh gosh kind of an estate sale I, thing i and, thought that and, was a cigar holder or something yeah and <laughs> It didn't come with any instructions, but apparently you get two sizes, but I really don't know how to use it. It just looks kind of cool, so I keep it around. Yeah. Um, and and I know I've got a big Magnum one. Sometimes on occasion I will you stack bucktail, but rarely. I like to hand stack it and just don't like that, you know, cut off paintbrush look to things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want um, that natural taper in there. But yeah, those those are the two, and I know the the brass stackers are not they're not cheap, and and but it's it's a worth worthwhile spend, and if you're like me, you'll have them for forty years. <laughs> yeah, they don't wear out yeah. um, at all. So uh, yeah, they get a little dented, but yeah, but they're and drive probably your significant other crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all hours of the night and day yeah. <laughs> oh, oh he's at it again yeah again <laughs> again <laughs> actually it's a real problem for me tying inspiration seems to hit at like 2 33 o'clock in the morning and yeah you, you got to go see if it's going to work or not usually it doesn't and you go what the heck was i thinking it was a fever dream you know yeah <laughs> uh, night whatever, terrors every once in a while <laughs> so i was them. mentioning before we go i was talking about that michelux sedge and the question we have and i'll just bring in a picture tim so you know and everybody else what the heck i'm talking about here i'm just gonna grab it here from my desktop i have to make it into a pdf and it's uploading processing and it's still on its side oh well what the heck imagine this uh, I'll take me out and you out for No, we don't want that. We want, so you see how that, uh, fly there. If you, it's supposed to be on its side, but you can see the three wings. There's the tail, a wing here, a wing at the midpoint and a wing basically at the quarter marks. So just above the hook point, the midpoint. And so to keep them from flaring wildly, for example, when I tie in this, uh, back wing is it's actually secured it flares out here, but I tie it in at the midpoint tightly and then use those controlling wraps you mentioned to keep the hair down and then dub over it. So you just get this stack of hair. And I wish I could make this stupid thing because it didn't sit, didn't uh, stay that way, but it's not laying on its side. And so you'll have to imagine that thing on its side. But just look up Mikulak Sedge, M I K U L A K. For anybody that's got. Uh, my new Orvis guide to fly fish uh, to uh, uh, still water trout fishing. Um, it's in the uh, what's in your fly box section. So anyway, it didn't that work out. 
it didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. <laughs> For some reason, it won't. It saves hor. It saves in the horizontal. I mean, looks in the horizontal and wants to save vertically. So, because you have to bring it in as a PDF. I don't know what they've done. They've changed their settings again. <laughs> Damn, Damn Streamyard. So, as they'll do. I might have to put that one on the must tie list, though. I got to try that. Oh yeah, I'll yeah. say that's yeah. a good good pattern. Yeah. You already featured one of my flies. I was honored. Yeah, no, I that was the great. Big times. I hit the big time. So, um, have we missed anything, um, Tim? We were we were talking about different types of hair because um, we've been at this an hour, almost twenty five minutes now. So, uh, we talked about spinning and flaring and trimming and, and, uh, yeah, and spinning and, and, heads and choosing it and and that's a lot of this battle is choosing the right material yeah. for the job. Yeah, that's yeah. that. That is the biggest part. Uh, is in. Yeah choosing it and and knowing what to choose what to look for yeah. and um <coughs> yeah that's um and uh, since i have this patch here i'll just show you real yeah. quick when, when i look at any any deer hair again I, I i touched on this earlier i will bend it like this and it doesn't yeah. matter whether it's a little teeny patch and you know this size bend it and Oh, and that's a great example of big. We were talking about those black tips. Yeah. Winter deer, though, that's the black tips. And and uh, this has got a lot of them. But it's it's a pretty good sample because pretty even all the way up on the top. Whereas this guy, they're kind of all over the place in terms of length of the hair. Uh, it's, it's not terrible, but, um, so, so yeah, when you, when you're looking at hair samples, that's, you know, they, they look okay like this, but the way to really see what's going on is to, to give them a little bend. Yeah. And let them stand up and expose yep. themselves. Yeah. Yep. And you, you can just tell so much by, by give like that one because yeah, that's where your broken tips are going to show up too right because yep. they yep. they tend to hide and if, if you're looking for a patch of hair to to stack for wings or tails broken tips aren't going to be much help for you and the the whole idea even on the small stuff i i was doing it with that big deer hair but i'll try to zoom in on this one if i if and i can come on now that's all the way zoomed in maybe we'll try this camera Zoom way in. There we go. So, that looks great. Yeah. If you look, you see all that little like fuzzy fibers in there. When yeah. when when you're tying it in and when you're spinning it, when when you're doing whatever, that's the stuff that you don't want in there. Okay. And yeah. that's why one of these little fine tooth combs. Yeah, the finer the better, it seems, right? Yeah. I really want some kickback from Maybelline and Revlon or, Revlon or something. Yeah. yeah, you could be there. You know, I'll see you on the ads on television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so gets you can see it yeah. really got that that world of difference. Yep, fine stuff out of there, and then I generally on all hair go out, grab the tips about two thirds of the way up. And any of those short guys, they come out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because they'll get in the way. If you're trying to tie a humpy or something, they're going to fold yep. over and, you know, be all over the place. So. And then one last little thing, just because my good friend Tom Rosenbauer doesn't do this. You guys can write to him and tell him he should. <laughs> so I'm going to stack this. And when, like, if, if I was tying in a caddis wing that i want yeah. the tips to go this way yeah. i'm going to open my stacker so the tips go this way there's a lot of junk in there so yeah, you'll I, open them in the way you're going to use them right and rather yeah. than try to flip them around because if you flip them around you're you're gonna get the tips uneven so yeah. but if i was tying a comparadon wing i do the opposite pull out yeah, because you tie those in pointing forward and then stand them up, or and like then, a sparkle done. Yeah, and then yeah. push them up. And yeah. so uh, kind of important how you open. That's a open great that's a great tip for everybody that's yeah. stuck around to, to the end. That's 
that's a nugget. That's the nugget everybody was looking for. <laughs> I think so. I'm biased. So. All right. We got to get out of here, Phil. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's presentation. Um, if you've got any comments, we've got some great comments we've seen scrolling in on the sides here. But if you think about after or if you're watching this after we've recorded, put those comments in because I patrol them all the time. We'll get back to you. Um, I, With the tying season on us, I'm looking forward to doing these events at least once a month, either Talk and Tie or Lake Talk Live. Um, so if there's any particular pain points you'd like me to address, and of course I'll... If Tim will let me, I'll have him back on again because I, I think too. I have a little too much fun with these. So, And <laughs> since I, I didn't get to see you at this year's symposium, um, but I will get to see you in Marlboro, New Jersey next month. Um, so, yeah. Um, and, again, this is being recorded. So it will be available on my YouTube channel, on my Phil Rowley Fly Fishing channel. And if you're a member of my Stillwater Academy private group, um, it will be there as well. And, of course, Tim will have it there. He can share it as well once it's done. Thanks everyone for joining us and uh, you enjoy your enjoy your tying season and best of the holidays to everyone. Hope Santa's good to you and lots of fly fishing and fly tying stuff under the tree for us. Take care. See you guys.